Hi, welcome to another edition of Spirit of the Valley. We have a much requested return visit today. Um, this has been Hannah Carney, by the way, and I will introduce her properly this time as the 210 Olympic gold medal winner in freestyle moguls. Um, probably the show that's been mentioned the most in terms of, are you ever going to get her back? Will she ever come back? And I said, well, if I ask her politely, I, I hope so. And she's got her few minutes in town right now, and I always manage to be lucky enough to stay in touch enough with her that she'll, she'll be ready to come. But she has been so busy when she's home, she, we're flattered and we're honored. So <laughs> thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a joy. We wanted to catch up a little. I did, because um, when we last were with you, you were just about to start your first term at Dartmouth. Yep. After seven years out. Yep. You got through that term, learned all the ways around the system <laughs> and how to exist on the. Now you've turned around. Yes. And you've changed. Tell us how. I had a plan originally last winter. I came up with a plan after I was accepted to Dartmouth that this season, the 2011-2012 ski season, would involve going to school in the fall, competing um, at way fewer competitions, um, and then going to school again in the spring. However, this summer, after completing the term at Dartmouth, the term ended in June, um, passed with not exactly flying colors, but passed, succeeded, um, accomplished that first start. With start flying goal. colors, she well, Yeah, I'll, 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 an you A minus well. and two B pluses. I'm very you, proud of myself. I've never worked so hard. Seven years of no study? Days. Seven years, two months to be God. exact. Okay. So. Um, yeah, it was an absolute shock. It was, um, I expected to work hard. I did not expect to sacrifice every single part of my life to spend all of my time studying. I didn't talk to my friends. I, <laughs> well, I don't, there aren't that many friends around, but I spent all of my time studying. My training um, was compromised. I expected that the spring is an ideal time to work on, on studying because right. your training um, is really limited. But as I trained this summer and felt really motivated, excited to ski, and also um, this strong desire to continue to improve, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do that and go to school at the same time. And I'm very grateful I went in the spring so that I had a preview of the work that it takes to succeed at Dartmouth. Otherwise, I would have assumed I was going to be able to balance both. I would have gone into the fall term um, and tried to, you know, commute on the weekends, do as much water ramp training as possible, um, because there was never any plan to give up skiing. I just wanted to um, step back and um, make sure I was still passionate and actually train because sometimes when you're competing you don't actually train that much you're just right. surviving week to week you're traveling to another country and exactly. I thought if I stayed out of the competition I'd be able to um, make improvements yep. actually train exactly. however I realized that the school would be um, time-consuming and hard to do both and part of my personality is like really striving for excellence and I think that if I had done both I was going to compromise my education and my training um, and People always tell me the education will be there. Dartmouth actually supported a plan for me to go in the springs for two more springs um, and then continue full time. Um, and with their support and just the gut feeling that it was the right thing to do, I've decided to compete full time this winter. You are so lucky. First, of just kudos to them for <laughs> making this happen because there were some schools that probably oh, yeah. wouldn't have been as flexible and would yep. have said, look, you signed up. We're going to do it the way we, we can't keep changing things for just you. So you've got them totally in your corner, thank heavens. Yes. So you're turning it all around. You're going to be there in the spring term. Yep. And no, no, no other time there. No, the summer, they have a great summer term. Yeah. And that sounds ideal because my sport's the winter. But that is the time when I need to train. I actually lived in Lake Placid. They have an Olympic training center there, which can't find a better place to live. It's like a free, funded by the United States Olympic Committee, a free place to live, a dorm set up. Yep food is cooked for you and all you do is train. There are no distractions and I ski down the plastic ramps and practice my jumps into the pool um, and because jumps are a really important part of mogul skiing there's no better way to learn them um, and therefore I have to be located near one of those yeah. facilities and I can't go to school in the summer so I'll have to wait until summer 2014 to try my first summer term and according to my D plan <laughs> I'm gonna graduate in June of 2016. That's if I go um, year-round for two years after, after. I'm done skiing. Um, I may have to give myself a summer off somewhere in there. I think, oh to let the God. information sink in. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm focusing on the skiing, knowing that the, spring, the school 
will be there for me in the spring, which will be a lovely distraction. I'm going to brush up my French this winter uh, with the Rosetta uh, Stone oh, online program, try to test out of some of that good. Um, this winter. So I have thi I'm going to read as much as I can be and practice my writing uh, because those are skills that I will obviously always, be using um, through school. Always. So stay, try to stay fresh this winter. And I figure a year-long break, or what it will be, it will be 10 months uh, of a break from school as opposed to a seven years and two months will be nothing. I won't be rusty. Well, at all. you've gotten back at it enough yeah. to get <laughs> yeah. your feet wet and figure your way yeah. around the college and, and what you have to do to get into classes and parking. Yes. And things like that. Are you now? Are you, do you can you that far ahead plan what you'll be taking next year so you'll have a better choice than you did this year? Yeah. <laughs> Just last week, I stopped by the uh, registrar's office and picked up the 780-page book of uh, courses, and it's called the ORC, the Organization. Uh, regulations and courses at Dartmouth and I can start browsing see what courses are available however I put a lot of energy into that last time like making charts as to what my schedule would be if I, right. I took what classes what credits I'd be getting what was interesting and all the different subject matters um, and then I didn't get into any of the classes I signed so up you for. had nothing that so you had three, <laughs> no. three to choose from or something if yeah, I remember it, right. it was and I'm still technically a freshman um, I'm still a first-year student and so I will not have uh, a lot of priority getting into classes so at least now I know that was one of those things I wasn't prepared for so it was like somewhat heartbreaking when I didn't get into the classes I wanted now I know that it's unlikely I'll get into them I'll just keep trying there's a public speaking course I would really like to take I think that will be relevant to my um, current situation and Absolutely. my life in the future so I didn't get into it um, for this fall when I thought I was gonna be taking classes this fall um, I'm gonna keep trying and I know that it will get easier and easier as I climb the ladder in status and, and you'll still have to use surrogates to do some of this work for you right uh, well I think now so this first term was really difficult you mentioned all the things I had to figure out it was a 10 week term basically took me the entire 10 weeks to sort of figure everything out where to park where the classes were how do I um, get tutoring where are the study where do the study groups meet where are the best places to um, study not to mention the Dewey Decimal System in Baker Library oh is uh, fairly impressive oh Annex B okay I didn't know that <laughs> um, so as sorting out all of those things how to sign up with, for courses was one of them um, because I was starting in the spring when I wasn't technically accepted until this fall um, was difficult because they I didn't, didn't know have what access to do with to you. Yeah, they had no idea. <laughs> Even this summer, it was funny because I should technically be an incoming freshman or yeah, you know, first year student. So they, I should be receiving emails like, "Welcome to Dartmouth. You're going to be coming for your first term. Would you like to join orientation?" It was about two weeks before the first term, and I hadn't received any mail, and I started to panic. It was a sign that I wasn't supposed to go this fall, yeah. Um, yeah. so it all worked out. But I thought that. So somehow I'd like skipped over the mailing system and hadn't received any information about the term except for the tuition bill. Um, that they found it. That's funny how they find you. <laughs> that, that found its way to me. They but, find you. Um, that was a sign that maybe I'd take a break and go back in the spring. So I've, I've sorted out all those things. Now I have access to the system and it's pretty cool the way you elect different courses. It won't let you like overlap. Um, and and then it'll let you know in about oh, two oh, week times oh. whether you got in or it not. Tells you whether it's and gonna then, be when you're already yes, in another room. Okay. Exactly. And then um, it'll tell you whether it, was ex it gives like a two week period where people can fuss around with it. Then they'll confirm your schedule or tell you, oh, you need to sign up for you need to choose new courses. So now I know all of those things. I'm I'm getting there. And um, the experience was not I did not fall in love with school. Um, let's just say it was a it was a lot of hard work and there were so many logistics to work out. But everyone assured me that that would be the hardest term I will probably ever go through, mm -hmm. uh, except for maybe if I'm writing a senior thesis or something like that. So um, I'm going into that's another, another reason that a year break I think is a good idea, sort of like a fresh start with all the tricky details the, behind the, me the, and the, under my belt, yeah. um, and so that I can carry a more positive attitude into this term and not feel guilty about skipping training. I can't imagine you not having a fairly positive attitude, <laughs> but I understand that those logistics are a lot more trouble than the studies. Yeah, it's sometimes. surprisingly uh, can be surprisingly frustrating when you don't understand. If you're not the normal but, yeah. student, anything outside the norm is going to make it look kind of tough. Um, so you're going to be going s just springs. Mm -hmm. You are going to, when is your next overseas? When do, I mean, you've been training all summer. If, yeah. if you're not on Facebook, you ought to be because you get some wonderful pictures of Hannah with the <laughs> ramps and what it takes. To, what it, I, I, I know Lake Placid well, and I had her picture. I had you in Lake Flower at some point, and it, it, someone said, no, they do this in a pool. Yeah, a small little pool. Um, but it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun life she has. It's a busy one. I, I literally got her because she was here for another situation she was doing today but um, 
When do you travel next? When do you go on a major, <coughs> major okay. tour? So before we go overseas, the first competition is in Finland on December 12th. Um, however, on November 13th, we'll go out west. The plane ticket hasn't been booked yet because it's wherever the snow yeah. falls, which is sort of everywhere right now, but nowhere has enough snow to build a mogul course or build a jump. So we're waiting. We're holding out for the big storms, either Colorado or Utah. Yeah. The ski team's headquartered in Utah. I'm hoping for that because they have a wonderful facility with a gym to use and everything like that. But otherwise, it's the mountains that will let us build a mogul course. Um, there, which takes a lot of snow. And I remember Aspen having a whole yep. like, cloud nine or something like that that was all moguls and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, but we're so structured yeah. the way they needed to be this very specific um, mogul course now. There's no such thing as those. We don't ever train on free moguls, even no. though that's how we all got started. In right. There. So I'll go out there for a two week camp, um, or less than that, a 10 day camp, yeah. home for Thanksgiving, yeah. and then en route to Finland on, I think we fly over there the last day of the month. Um, and so we'll be there for a good six days of training before the event. And then it's we only have two events before Hall Hall before Halloween, before um, Christmas, Christmas this yeah. year. And then we'll be back for the holidays. So you get you get the holidays. Yeah. You seem to have gotten most of those holidays along the way anyway, which is good. Usually we get home right before Thanksgiving, yeah. the 20 third, 24th. Yeah. Um, but then we're not, we don't compete again until the first week in January. So we have a nice little break. Oh, I think, well, you have to, you, you can't do what you do without. You do live out of a time. suitcase. And so the, it's nice. We're never really gone from, I think the longest time we've gone is three and a half weeks, uh, gone from home. And usually it's about three weeks of traveling, a week at home, three weeks of traveling, a week at home. And that makes it a much more manageable it, schedule. And it's also important mentally to know that schedule. Yeah. It's like in school when you said, oh, I can see my next vacation coming. <laughs> you know, you need to know you've got a break. Um, I was telling Hannah earlier one of my favorite, my favorite piece of her life that she shared on Facebook over the last couple of years, and oh, this year was um, a picture of her, her wood stove, <laughs> clothes drying behind it, warm muffins freshly made sitting on top of it, and a, I think there was a pair of slippers or something on the floor. <laughs> yeah. But it just, it just, it just said everything about what it means to get a break from your rat race. I remember that picture specifically. Oh. They were cross country ski boots. Uh, because and not slippers because oh. that day it was like a really cold day yeah. in January and it was um, the nature of our schedule as I said you get some yep. downtime this was bonus downtime because it was we had a competition I think January 10th in Quebec oh and so I'd been able to drive up there yep. in a this a snowstorm that was bad enough the whole way I was like I'm gonna quit I can't do this anymore I can't do this driving by myself in my little car that didn't have all-wheel drive um, could not see the roads, going for like 30 miles an hour on the ah. interstate. Finally, once I got over the Canadian border, it turned to rain, which is bad for our ski condition, for the skiing conditions, but better for the driving. Made it up there, had an event. It was actually my least successful event of the year, now that I look back upon it. But after that, I came home for about two or three days before we competed in Lake Placid. So again, this is like the part of the tour, the World Cup circuit that I can, I have control over. I drive, and um, which is nice. So I get to stop at home in between. And what I did was I went cross country skiing as like a recovery exercise yep. on this bitter cold January day. When I got home that afternoon, I made a wood, uh, made a fire in my wood stove. Uh, did got to do a load of laundry in between events. Dried it by the wood stove and made I think they were lemon ricotta almond. I think uh, that sounds right. Cupcakes or muffins, and then I brought them to Lake Placid to share with my teammates. See, this is, a th and you know, you, you talk about. Um, Cross country skiing, it's a warmer upper when you're out oh, there yeah. long enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. can, that bitter cold doesn't change the fun no. of that, or I, I do snowshoeing, but same thing, I'm shedding yeah. the whole way. It's sort of similar to mobile skiing, not the lip seats, just going skiing, downhill skiing. Yeah, you're going to get cold because you're sitting on the lift and you're going fast and there's wind in your face. Right. Skiing moguls gets your body temperature up, so oh does cross country skiing, much more so, and snowshoeing, and I do all those and, activities. And, and I, it also makes winter more fun for those of us oh, that yeah. aren't doing what you're doing, but, but <laughs> or at a level like that. But it, I, I snowshoe all winter and I just feel, I'll, I, I'd rather be out than in anyway. Absolutely. So gym is great, but not, in, not if there's something to do. <laughs> I mean, I just went out and bought a bike, a new bike the other day, oh, and now yeah. I'm riding party routes now so That's I can get ready smart. for next year. I think I went on my last bike. I went on a bike ride yesterday, but it might have been the last one for the season because it's definitely it's getting cold. colder now. It's cold. I have one tomorrow with a friend and, you know, we're, each of us is apt to back out. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I doubt that. I just want to get the experience on a new bike and see how much more fun the party is going to be next year instead of being the last one to get and up the hill on and big fat tires. So I, that, that's been a fun diversion. Um, so you also came home because your mother was married. Yes. I remember that being a big event, yeah. part of the 
last was, since I've seen a you. A weekend celebration, not it just a wonderful. day. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. Really nice. Because she was, it was just, she looked fabulous. And I <laughs> saw her again at the, I think at the chat, and, and yeah. she just looked terrific. Yes. Um, so what do you do now when you're home? You're, what kind of, when you say you're booked, I know you did a PSA this morning. Okay. What, what is, when you're booked, okay. what does that mean? What kind well, of stuff? I'll run you through my daily schedule or the next, next two weeks. So I'm, I'm right. home. <laughs> it's a busy week. I'm, I'm home. I'm not as home as often anymore just with relocating to Lake Placid for the summer and, of course, traveling all the time for competition. So when I am home, I like to... Um, fulfill all my obligations at one time exactly um, and so I have a week of a very busy week coming up here um, let's see besides the training which is never it's not as much as it, you would think for an Olympic athlete you'd be training nine hours a day um, when I'm in Lake Placid I'm training probably six hours a day but that's when all I'm doing is training when I'm here and it's sort of like real life balance with my training I'm in the gym no more than two hours that would be the absolute longest I'd ever be in the gym uh, two hours a day maybe some stretching in the evening or like a spin a recovery spin but just one workout um, and then balance on top of maintaining your home and as everyone knows plenty of errands to run mail to send the emails to answer um, but the obligations that uh, we're speaking of are actually kind of cool opportunities this morning I filmed uh, my very first PSA for it was for FEMA and SBA, the Small Business Administration, um, reminding Vermonters to file the right paperwork so they get, if they were affected by Tropical Storm Irene, they get reimbursement or loans or some funding to help them get through this tricky time. And it's nice to be able to give back. Now, it was not my idea. They approached me, but it was absolutely You had yes. to feel good doing that. Yeah, so that is great. giving back. And the other thing that was really cool, the next person they were going to film was the governor. So I'm in good company. <laughs> and then I told them that they should tell him I was going to maybe uh, run for his job at some point here if his PSA <laughs> didn't go as well as mine. So, <laughs> so starts, it makes everything make a Everything competition. a competition. Everything, Absolutely. Everything should be. Everything. Um, but I know you've done interviews with Richmond uh, High School. Yes. Okay. So, and then uh, let's, let's fill out the rest of this week. Oh, and then now that the Killington is actually officially open, so I'm going to try to go make some turns so that when I show up at our uh, training camp in a week or two, I'm not too rusty just yeah. stayed on contact with the snow and ready to jump ready to ski moguls i'm also going to go over to waterville valley um and train with them they that's where i grew up that's skiing training with those um coaches and they now they invested in this sounds pretty crazy a giant airbag and they built a ramp they called it a dry ramp so instead of the water ramping but you don't need snow it's still just plastic and you ski down the ramp and you <laughs> land on a giant inflatable bag. Oh my gosh. I'm going to make sure no one gets hurt. I'm going to let a few other people give me that. I wouldn't go that. first. Yeah, I'll let them. <laughs> but if it works out, it's going to be a great way to train tricks without having, needing snow. So this is all sort of in the st beginning stages right now. But And then trampoline is another good way to train. So with that training, um, I'm also next week, I'm speaking at, well, this is a Friday morning. When is the Dartmouth? At, um, Dartmouth. You're doing a speech um, oh, yes. Part of a panel? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Let's go in chronological order. Friday morning, I'm speaking at Crossroads Academy. Um, my stepsister on my dad's yeah. side um, is an eighth grade student there. Aww. I'm speaking at Crossroads Academy. Um, on next Wednesday evening, I believe it's Wednesday evening, I'm speaking at the DHMC yeah. Knee Injury Prevention. Yeah. And also in good company there it's like it's basically a whole panel of doctors speaking yeah, and they okay. had me in to talk about my experience uh, not in a very medically professional way but just how I got through the human it what yeah side and because a lot of those doctors who are great at their jobs have probably never actually had knee surgery and so I'm just going to talk about that and it's funny because I clearly I remember it but it was years ago now it was 2007 and the further away you get from the actual knee surgery, there are things I forgot about it. And so I was looking back over, I found a folder that said, Hannah's ACL reconstruction. I saw the photographs of my ACL flopped down yep. that they took when they were in there. Um, I saw the notes I'd taken the beforehand. The surgical write-up? Yep, the surgical write-up. My own notes when I was trying to figure out whether I would use my own hamstring or uh, a graft. cadaver's yeah. graft or a patella tendon. Um, so all those things and the process of making those decisions, I'll try to share with the audience and hopefully no one ever has to go through it but I'm sure there'll be some No, but I think having have. a real human face on one of these instead of just medical people is going to make for an interesting I hope so. Seminar. I hope so. It should be. I mean, I had a positive experience too, like where the outcome was really positive. Right. So, um, well, it's they, not, they not probably wouldn't have asked story. you if it hadn't been. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a very good point. Um, so, I'm doing that on Wednesday evening. Uh, I believe it's at the hospital. Yeah. Um, and then on Thursday, I'm speaking at Hartford High School, good for right you. down the road Jeez. here. And um, I was actually asked by Alexis Nelson, who is now a teacher at Hartford High School, but who I used to play soccer with 
at Hanover High School. She was three years older than I was. She was a senior when I was a freshman. And uh, she's now moved on to a whole other career. Fabulous. So it'll be fun to see. I haven't seen her in years. So it'll be fun to see her. And then on Saturday, I'll be signing autographs at the Golf and Ski Warehouse. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Scott Peters got you in there, I bet. Uh, I'm try uh, it was Brad Bunker. Okay. Oh, uh, you know what? It was somebody. my father, yeah. and it was uh, Mr. Dodds because that's right. My dad acted as my agent. I think he went. I picked up golf this year. I know you did. Um, this was as a school was pretty stressful for me, and I wasn't exercising that much. And I was like, I need to do something that gets me outside when the weather's nice and makes me forces me not to think about my subjects golf and my focus. so yes, exactly. <laughs> so I started golfing, and uh, that's how the relationship. Well, golf and ski, the ski yeah, side of things, obviously exactly. already made sense. But um, they actually provide me with a new set of golf clubs. Unfortunately, it didn't instantly improve my golf game. That's what I was hoping. All of a sudden, I would just be way better. But it turns out it takes a lot of skill. It's so, the uh, operator involved. Is, mm, does, a, I, I've, I've done that thinking, oh, this is the club that <laughs> got my score down. I mentioned something like that, and they're like, yes, that is why we stay in business. I'm glad to hear that didn't fix you completely because you always security, people going back. Exactly. People like us. Oh, um, new club. He's coming, actually. I've got the dogs coming on oh, Monday. The, the brothers. Yes, The perfect. three varsity coaches. That will be really cool. And, and, and I think they're quite a phenomenon. Yeah. Um, with they're all each about community. With a, another and side. Yeah. Life. But um, they, like yourself, personify what we're all about here. Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw that you had been to the high school because a, a neighbor of mine's grandson yes. interviewed you. And then Evan Dibvig was here the other yeah. day and said he was going to be interviewed too. Very as cool. one of the Olympians. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. He, he, was, he was fun to have on because he and, and Chad Denning, who is the New London rec, rec director, okay. who used to be with Hank, um, also does a, a huge number of things that that Whaleback can incorporate into their other than skiing mode. Smart. And lots of uphill climbs and runs and ways to use that as a park. Yeah, Whaleback seems like they've done a great job yeah. of realizing that, you know, ski season's limited. Is there are 12 and, months. But there's, of, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but with the, the bar there, the skate park in the summer, the they, they BMS really, biking, the camps they, they run. They've got them all, really and they've got the room. Um, Evan actually has suggested to Jerry and myself to, that we could do several shows on on what they do down oh, there, yeah. and even maybe go down there and oh, that would be really get cool. some of it on tape. Um, so you're you're home for two weeks, and you probably have ten minutes to yourself in that <laughs> whole time. Well, when I you make can time for, bake my, for myself. Ricotta muffins, yes. and, and other than that, but I, I still maintain one of your best lucky assets is your home, yeah. which you have also said that not many people can have kept the family home. And yes can go back and just really crash in the real sense of the word if you want, yeah. although you don't do that very well, I don't no, think. No, I'm, I'm getting better at it. Netflix helps. Um, Net, yeah. Time at home usually involves cooking, Yep. watching some Netflix, and that's my way to, uh, to relax. Yeah, well, I'll put my food order in lately. <laughs> later. Uh, um, so you, from now, you are on a path to graduate when? 14? 16. 16. 14 is the next Olympics. So it'll be springs until then, oh, and then starting that's in when 14. You go full time. I would, and that would the grad that expected graduation date would only be if I went full time, meaning for the summers, last, falls, winters, springs, for summer fall. Yeah, and that well, who knows? I mean, that will I be mean, a really good option when I'm done. Right spring. now, it probably sounds like that very sounds like, unlikely. That sounds hard, but at that point, when I'm not training, it's like what else would I be doing? Exactly. Going to school is what you uh, will be my life at that point. Exactly. Just, I, it's hard to think about it in those terms because well, right now I'm very wrapped up you don't even want to training. because you've got to keep your head right where yeah. it should be right now on on 14. Yeah, exactly. Which and I think people are excited when they hear this. I think people I've talked to and, and said, you know, she changed after you saw her on TV. She's <laughs> changed. She's absolutely going full guns. Yeah, for I trained. 14. I set my own personal record for the number of jumps into the pool this summer. Now that's that not was a number I could not <laughs> believe. Let's say it's 1,174 jumps into the pool of water. My previous record was the summer before the 2010 Olympics, and that was exactly 1,000. Um, and just because I did a certain number of jumps doesn't mean it's not like that doesn't necessarily mean you're training way harder, but it means I spent more time there and I was pretty focused on another reason I didn't go to school is that that whole time I was working towards a new trick, but I was working with a new coach and we sort of like reevaluated the trick that I was doing and realized there's so much more to improve in this one trick that I didn't get far enough along in the new trick yep. that it would have made sense to take time. I thought I was going to take time off 
from competing and train that new trick. Um, the trick's not ready for snow. And I just, as I was thinking about going to school and giving up some of that water ramping time, I wouldn't have set that personal record. And I think I would have looked back and just said, ah, oh, you know, if I get in that gate in the Olympics and I don't have a new trick because I could have gotten one more month of water right. ramp training, I just don't want to have any regrets. And, and yet, I know that I can go to school in the future. I know that I'll succeed there or I will be able to put all my energy into succeeding there. But for right now, um, I just don't want to look back and wish that I had done something else. Life, we all end up with too many regrets. Yeah. You're not going to. No, and, I don't think and, so. And I think you're going to know when it's time to stop. That's what you they say. You know yourself pretty well. It's almost like you'll know if you don't if you don't know it's time to stop, it's not. And the other thing is, because yeah, the, those ideas still go through my mind, and that's the reason I wanted to try school. It's like, well, let's see if this is what I right. feel passionate about right now, but it's still mogul skiing, period. Um, there's nothing, I don't feel worn out from the travel. I've gotten better at dealing with that. Um, I'm not bored with the training, and I think that um, what's benefiting me is um, 25 years old, I'm a more mature athlete now, and the experience helps. Everything um, you've done. It helps you be able to handle it. And even going to school, which was, you know, maybe my training was compromised for those 10 weeks, but it made me realize that how much I appreciate this lifestyle of being able exactly. to travel to Sweden and eat wonderful food there. Oh, and compete. Or, oh, get to go to Sweden and be in the dark um, for two weeks well, in, in December. Yeah. Those things are, like, I will not get that experience at school. Um, mind you, I'm also aware that that's Traveling isn't the only way to educate myself, and, edu and an actual academic setting is really important. But I only have this opportunity. But you wouldn't to be going to those places exactly any other way. And I only have this opportunity to go to these places through the ski team's funding right now because I'm a good athlete. And you if have I, to take if advantage. If pass me by, I would be upset. It, you have to take advantage of everything that makes it easier, makes yeah. it possible. Yes. Um, but keep those pictures of some of those pictures of. Austria and yeah, those were just so stunning. I right? guess I can give it. So if if anyone's interested in seeing the photos that Judy's talking about, I like to share you know once a week or every day or so a photo of somewhere I, I, I am in the world. I wish you would because um, on my I page. I every time I get on Facebook and there's a picture of Hannah <laughs> traveling, it just it just I'm living through her vicariously. <laughs> but it's a um, it just adds to your your whole pic, your whole persona. Thanks. To well, see you to as a tourist, not yeah, just yeah, yeah. an athlete. And we don't. Sometimes we see a lot of hotels and a lot of ski hills, and it's not yep. that scenic. But then there's every once in a while we're Those staying nighttime. like a bed and breast, oh like breakfast in Austria, oh. and you know, like beautiful snowstorm, oh. and walking in a field. There's a castle, and that's really but fun to it share. It was magnificent. With so don't stop. <laughs> okay. Thank you um, for your support. Um, the worst thing about having Hannah on is that it probably is the fastest half hour that I <laughs> spend in my life. Um, I always tell my gym people, instructors and all, that that's the fastest hour, but this is, this is, beats that by a lot. <laughs> Not so, as painful. No, no, you're, it's, I, the gym isn't painful, you know I love it, but uh, I, yes, of course. I, um, it goes fast. Yeah. This goes faster, and we gotta say goodbye. Okay, well thank you. Um, I can only thank you, uh, really, sincerely, for making a second trip in, because <laughs> I think, I think it's been interesting to see that how your mind was affected by your Dartmouth experience, yeah. and it told you, no, <laughs> not now. Not the right time. And the right time will be there, and as you said, you'll know it, your gut will tell you, and you'll go right back at it and ace it. And but I'm not giving up. I'm still, I'll be signing up for classes in a couple months. You're deferring. Even. Yes, just, be, just until a few months. And you're still going to be connected there every spring, yep. so that's a good part. You yeah. don't lose it totally. Well, we'll, we'll have another check-in uh, yeah. after I'm a sophomore, maybe. I want to, I want to, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I want to talk to you when you're going Full time, okay. or more time, oh, yes, or whatever that, that. See how that feels. But in the meantime, um, I, I just thank you again. It was great that you could fit us in. I know what your life is like right <laughs> now, and, and I do appreciate it. Um, anyway, that was our second visit with Hannah, and hopefully not the last, but we'll get her in one of her next lives, which is going to, she'll have many still. Um, Thank you all for joining us. Uh, you can reach me at Judy McEwen at Comcast.net if you have some ideas for the shows. Um, and for those of you who have friends who don't get that channel, always, always go to catv8.org and look up videos on demand and put in the word spirit and you will get all of our shows that are up there so that you can see them all retroactively. Um, a lot of people do it that way. Um, Hannah has friends around the world, so I'm sure some of them have done it and where well, they never would get this channel, clearly, <laughs> if the next town can't. So thank you all very much for watching. We were thrilled to have Hannah back, and it, it, it made my day. And 
hopefully yours. So we'll see you next time.